In this video, we're going to be showing you how to repair or build a harness, not that looks like this, but looks like this. This type of harness is weatherproof, modular, repairable, and easily testable, opposed to butt connectors or soldering. So we had a customer come in and he had an ice cream truck and the lift gate was not working. And as you can see here from the stickers on the side, it's an ice cream truck. And sure as heck, the lift gate was not working and it came down to the wiring. Now this lift gate had two controllers, one inside, one outside, and the main power wire had kind of corroded off, the butt connector fell apart, had some corrosion in the wiring. And I gave the customer two options. Basically, I said, hey, I could just solder the one back together. You could get down on the road or we can fix it correctly. So in the future, if you have to change one of your controllers or the lift gate motor, it'll make it much easier. It'll be weatherproof, it'll be easier to test. Basically no disadvantages other than it costs a little more and the parts are a little more expensive. And he opted for the better repair, which is good because I've been wanting to make a video on this for a little while. So these are the better style butt connectors someone had installed. I don't know if it was the customer themselves or someone previous owner. And what we're gonna be doing here is labeling each wire in each circuit and with these wiring labeling blocks. So basically it's just a little sticker with either a zero through a nine on it. And you can put them around wires. It's really good for something like this where you're gonna be building kind of a custom harness. So basically I'm gonna just put zeros on all the ones that are connected together here. Then I'll put ones, twos, threes, you get the picture. And this is what we call a Deutsch kit. And it basically uses, for this size wire, one style pin. There's a male and a female, and then you can get different style connectors, anywhere from even one wire all the way up to multiples. Uh, 12, 14, there's 70 pin, 40 pin, basically as many as you want. So if you're building a harness, this is a great way to go. And you might be thinking, well, this is kind of overkill, isn't it? Couldn't you just solder it? Yes, I could have. However, just imagine that instead of me doing a fix like this, imagine an engine where none of the sensors or anything have plugs. They're all soldered together. Anytime you had to change a plug or have a wiring problem, you would have to cut the wiring and solder it together, but connect it together. Anything where you could potentially have to troubleshoot it in the future or replace a component, you want it to be modular, meaning you can in the future repair it or test when needed. Now what we're doing here is we are, since they're all labeled, we're going to be cutting them at equal lengths. And what that's gonna allow us to do is strip them at equal lengths in the future, which will be in a couple minutes, and then install the connectors and the pins that we're going to be using. So now that they're all cut, what I like to do, and I drew this before, um, you can tell I drew it because it looks like a five-year-old drew it, is I make my own little harness and write down all the part numbers I wanna use beforehand. That way when it comes time to when you're under the truck or actually doing it, you're not gonna forget. And we have these splitters here. Those are factory sealed splitters. We have some female Deutsch pins. We have some male Deutsch pins. And then we have these four prong connectors, male and female. And the connectors are great. They allow it to be weatherproof completely. The pins don't, however, the pins are excellent. And I've never actually had a problem with a Deutsch pin. However, sometimes the connectors and stuff can break. Obviously they're plastic, but the pins themselves never had an issue with. So normal wire strippers are good for certain applications. However, anything where you're gonna be doing like more than one wire, I always reach for these auto strippers and I've had them for a long time. I believe these are ideal electric, but there's tons of different manufacturers for these. If you're gonna be doing anything with a lot of wiring, I really recommend getting some auto strippers. I'll put a link in the description. If you wanna help the channel, just click on the link. And they're gonna help strip the wires more uniformly and not gonna be pulling on the wires, potentially breaking them. And they basically just work with a, an opposed uh, grip and opposed stripper. And you just pinch them together and it'll strip the wire for you. They work really well. And you want to kind of strip them to a uniform length each. And as you use Deutsch pens, you'll get used to kind of what the correct length is because the depth of the exposed wire matters opposed to how far it goes in before you crimp them on the, either the male or the female pins. And actually, 
one's called a pin one's called a socket but basically they're just their pins so once they're all stripped off uh, one thing I did notice is some of the wiring oh, I one of my little letters or numbers fell off here some of the wiring here was not all bright copper some of it had a little bit of a greenish tinge to it which means those butt connectors that was on there were not sealed and allowing small amounts of moisture in which isn't great now what would the best option be the best option would be to actually just replace the entire harnesses or to cut them all the way back but this customer wanted to get on the road and i don't want to spend hours and hours trying to replace a switch when i can actually repair it so you can see the difference in the colors there and you can see this wiring harness is actually part of the switch so we, do, we would have had to wait for the switch would have, would have taken several days so you can see they should be like the outer ones the bright copper these have somewhat of a greenish tinge not the best but they will conduct and i don't want to have to pull all the motor out and stuff customer doesn't want to pay for that so we're going to make it best repair with the situation now this is a closed barrel crimper this is the type of crimper you need to use for deutsch pins because you don't just want to use a normal crimper you want to use this style and you can see it has four little teeth that come together at 90 degree angles and you can you can set the pin depth and I just got this one. This one's actually for uh, the 12 gauge ones. However, we're using the 16 gauge pin, so we're going to use the red handled ones. And I've had this one for a long time. This is not an actual Deutsch branded one. Those are about $200. This one's about $20 or $30. It's a tool aid one. I'll put a link in there too. And this is our Deutsch pin. So this is a female Deutsch pin. You have kind of a goldish tinge to them, and they work really well. There's a correct side we're going to crimp on and that side has a little hole in the side there it's hard to see but when you're holding one if you look real closely there'll be a small hole and that's to see that the cable's all the way through so once it's on be careful that none of the wires haven't gone in and then all you're going to do is seat it and crimp it and that one's crimped now all we have to do is check that it's not gonna fall off and it will not I've never had one after I crimped it with the closed barrel crimper come off they are held on there forever then all we're gonna do is crimp the rest here and it's the same crimper for the male or the female pinner socket and we're doing all the females here so once they are all crimped oh, I had to trim that one back it was stripped I stripped it a little bit farther than I should have and if you strip it too far, when you go to push it into the connector, it makes it harder. So this is the male pin itself. The crimped end, it's hard to see. My camera does not want to focus on the uh, the pin here, but it will. There it is. There's a little hole. You can just see it. I just rotated it away uh, under the green line. And that's the male portion of the pin. And that's basically how they sit in there. And remember, the pin is not what makes it waterproof or weatherproof that's the actual connector itself because they have seals on both the wire end and on the connector end so this is a deutsch pin now they're they're a deutsch connector they're numbered which is really nice because this is one through four and we already we already put wire numbers on them one through four now there's also a brand called amp seal amp seals are somewhat similar they'll use the same pins but they're a little different they usually have a red lock tab and the connectors look much different i prefer the deutsch pins but or the deutsch connectors but the pins and sockets are the same so all we're going to do is match up the numbers on the connector with those on the wiring and then you just have to put the little green tab on the front face and that's what retains them in there there's actually a little uh, ratchet finger that holds it in but this holds that from moving so that is now a sealed connector and what's great about these is now that not everything's butt connected together if there was a problem in the circuit in the future you could actually test here easily or let's say the connector breaks or you get some damage you could repair it much easier so went ahead and put the connectors on the other ones it's the same procedure they're numbered and now unfortunately this is three connectors to one it's not just two so that would have made it a lot easier we could have just connected them directly oh and here's something i got to show you this is a what would they call a blank now the reason it's called a blank is because we went through all this trouble to make this a waterproof system but since this one only has three wires and we're using a four wire connector 
if we left it open, moisture and dirt could get in there. So you basically need the blank there to seal it off. Now, like I was saying before, we can't just plug them in directly, unfortunately, because you have two controllers going to one motor. Now, CAT makes these, and what they are is they're sealed splitters. So it has a CAT part number, 207-3814. And it's a male and then two females on one end. And that's going to allow us to easily build a sealed harness that will connect all these together instead of trying to make something that's still using solder or whatever kind of defeats the purpose so same thing we did before we're just going to line them up and we are going to go from one to one to one and then from two to two to two and just repeat that until we've built our little harness now this making this three-way harness is what makes this job more tedious and more expensive like i said if it just had a single controller this would have been a lot easier because they would have plugged directly into each other but this is what it is so we're gonna make it work now do we want to seal these wires or put any sort of loom or anything around them well since these are outside of the vehicle i'd say no um the split loom and stuff in a really wet environment and these little lock tabs in the center can be a pain needle nose pliers work great for that tend to hold in dirt and moisture i would say more than if they are not in some sort of split loom or something unless you have something that's a really good tight uh, loom now what i like to do is put a little bit of silicone lubricant around the seals on the male ends now this is not a petroleum base and this is not silicone like the ceiling like rtv silicone this will stay as a somewhat gel liquid and since it's not petroleum based it's not going to cause these seals to swell and what it's going to do is going to help seal a little bit better because if they go on dry it can pinch them and if you ever were to remove them it'll make removing them easier as well this doesn't dry either so it's not going to leave any sort of residue or anything you don't have to worry about like packing the pins with it or anything some people like to do that i do not so once they're all clipped together you're actually done um all you'd want to do now is zip tie it so it's kind of out of the way not hanging down low like it would be here and like i did here there's nothing really to zip tie to other than the wiring itself so i did that it'll float a little bit but it's it's off the ground it's not going to damage anything and zip tying it like that's going to not bend the pins or anything should be good to go so really all we have to do now is verify that the connectors work oh uh, looks like he needs a little bit more wiring fix there on the brake lights so we got our up and down controller here which is the external one Let's see if it works would appear that that works so we now have our internal one as well which luckily the cord's really long so right here looks like it works and i will take the chocolate eclair looks pretty good you guys suffered through this whole video time for a little have a viewer submitted destruction of the week this is a 3406 engine that came into their shop not sure where their shop is but you can see this piston is pretty much sideways in this liner here uh, or at least on a weird angle these are actually gouges into the side of the liner um, he had also sent some pictures with some uh, fairly bent push, push rods so this is 3406b but my goodness, I've never seen a liner really scored like this. Uh, that has taken some physics to break. Anyways, thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching.